Now tonight is a great night for Koneko. It brings together two people in this space from different domains, photography and the environmental policy. This thing that happened uh, so disastrous in, uh, in Chernobyl is not something that just happened at a point in the past. It thrusts directly into our present. This is, uh, this is a documentation of a huge footprint of the results of, a few, of, a, of, of major human decisions that can have untold burdens upon a, a community. I saw what that was like, and I saw that it was really because of this uh, nuclear reactor just blowing up. It was it handled improperly. The Forbidden Zone is a 19-mile radius that starts, this was the epicenter of the disaster where the meltdown originally started. So 19 miles around is a what they refer to as a forbidden zone. I happened to enter one house, but on the bottom drawer I pulled this open and I saw a little box just in the back, back drawer, like a little cigar box, and I happened to pull it out and I opened it up and just tucked neatly right inside of that box was that letter. And I, it was so profound that, you know, I think about it right now and I still get, go get goosebumps because it was almost like I found a message in a bottle. And I, and I still ask myself, it's like, why me? But it also, the fact that there was one anonymous voice, it was just such a plead for home. And this was a victim of the relentless search for energy at any cost. And I think this letter was written to be found. I don't think this letter was written for, for their sake. I feel as though, you know, it, they wanted people to, that they wanted this to happen. What, what I really was, intrigued by was the ability to sort of do a partnership with Jim about, you know, being moved by these pictures and reflect upon them about what kind of narrative, what kind of expertise, the fact that there are lots of portals we have to bring together so we can enter in as a community into the kind of decisions we need to be making. The, the, the thing about photography so many times is it's not what you're shooting, it's what you're not shooting. It's a big decision you have to make. There's so much going on. I mean, everywhere you look, it's like you're in a kaleidoscope and you've got to be very focused. My second trip, I would say, is more focused because I was very moved by the words of this person. I related to what it was like to live there. This work can't sit in a box. I'm not interested in taking this to a gallery. I'm not I, I want this to have a voice. This is bigger than my pictures. It's bigger than me. This is about other people's lives. When uh, this disaster happened, the Soviet authorities did not tell the people this was happening. They did not tell them about the nature of the intensity of the fallout. They did not tell them about the fact that the cows were uh, being fed uh, tainted radioactive feed. So we have to go back to these things and see how are these human failures rooted to a deep moral concern and a moral impact on, the, on, our, on our lives in the present? Creativity is a unique thing because creativity in, in the world that a lot of artists live in is making art. It's looking at things in a unique way. For these people, creativity is their existence because they have nothing. Creativity is a very unique concept that we can apply in our daily lives, whether it's creating a power system that can be safe and effective, and um, how you photograph, how you approach people when you shoot. That's creative also. So different forms, different outcomes. The question that always comes up continually is, relates to this other man's comment, and that is the, what I'll call disinformation, that comes to try to obscure the science engagement on these questions and the insistence upon getting real facts that are understandable is um, something we need to do and it, it, it could be a, a genuine democratic revolution if we made a demand that these economic, ecological, and quality of life issues were actually presented to us in uh, real terms, real decisions. Uh, what do you think of the role uh, of nuclear power as we go forward? I'll tell you as a layperson. I just think these places need to be done responsibly. That's all I can say, that's all I know. I don't understand how these are engineered, but I do know that certain measures have to be taken and people that design these need to plan for the worst case scenario. A whole range of people can take different paths and think about not that we're doomed, 
but that we have the ability to change the way we live and make decisions from where we live, where we work and where we sit that can improve the well-being of the world. And you know, and I, and I stop and I think about uh, Chernobyl and it's so simple. And uh, you know, whether you live in a castle or a cottage, I mean a home is a home. And my, my greatest dream would be that no one ever finds a letter like this again.